Contents that we are going to discuss in today's class are recapitulation of the last lesson that is the response of RC low pass filter circuit for the sinusoidal input followed by response of RC low pass filter circuit for step input. Here we are going to derive the expression for the output voltage when the input is a step input and pass it through the RC low pass filter circuit. Okay. Also we will define the term rise time and bandwidth so that we will look at what is the relationship between the rise time and the bandwidth. Lastly, we will summarize what is that we have learned in today's class. Fine. Okay. So let's begin. In the last class, we considered the circuit RC low pass filter circuit to which the input is VI of T, which is a sinusoidal input. And we observed that the output is also a sinusoidal output. Okay. So when the input is sinusoidal to a linear circuit, the output is also a sinusoidal. Of course, maybe the magnitude is amplified and there might be some phase shift that is introduced in the output. But otherwise, the shape of the output is same as the shape of the input. So that means the output is going to get preserved. Okay, the shape of the output is going to get preserved when the input is a sinusoidal input and passed through the linear circuits. Unlike that, when the input is a non-sinusoidal signals, uh, that are passed through the linear circuits, then uh, the input waveform is going to get altered. Okay, so altering the shape of the input signal, passing it through a linear network is what is called as linear wave shaping, right? So this RC low pass filter circuit and RC high pass filter circuit are coming under this linear wave shaping circuits, fine? Okay. Also, we looked at uh, in the last class frequency response of RC low pass filter circuit for sinusoidal input. Okay. Here we consider the circuit. Okay. Where the current that is flowing is assumed to be I of T. The input is V I of T. The output is V naught of T. We are taking across the capacitor C. And for deriving the transfer function, we have applied the voltage division rule. Okay. Because R and C elements are in series and the current flowing through them is same. Okay. We have applied the voltage division rule in order to write the output voltage in terms of the input voltage. Thereby, I can apply the Laplace transform on both sides so that I'll be getting the transfer function in terms of S domain, where S is equal to J omega. Replacing S is equal to J omega, I can get the transfer function as a function of frequency F. Right? Okay. So with the knowledge that magnitude of A plus JB is given as root over A square plus B square and angle A plus JB is given as tan inverse B by A, I can uh, get the expressions for the gain as 1 over root over 1 plus F by FH whole square where FH is 1 over 2 pi RC where R and C are the circuit elements. Okay. So FH is called as upper cut off frequency and you know that low pass filter circuit normally passes the low frequencies and attenuates or rejects the high frequencies. How do the circuit come to know what are all low frequencies, what are all high frequencies? Any frequency that is less than FH will be treated as low frequencies by the circuit and will be passed by the circuit. Any frequency greater than FH will be treated as high frequencies by the circuit and will be rejected by the circuit. Okay. Also, we looked at Theta is given as minus tan inverse of F by FH, where minus is denoting that the output voltage is leading the input voltage. Okay. Also, we have considered several values of the frequency for which we found out the gain and the angle, so that with the help of these values, we could get the magnitude response and the phase response. Right? Okay. So this is how the magnitude response or the phase response are going to look like, right? So in the magnitude response, the x-axis is frequency and the y-axis is the gain, right? And in the phase response, x-axis is frequency and the y-axis is angle, right? What is that I can understand looking at the magnitude response? At f is equal to zero, the magnitude gain is found to be the maximum denoted by AB max. And the gain is found to be same 
for a certain frequency until it is moving towards the FH, it starts reducing. When it is beyond this uh, F is equal to FH, then it is further reducing. Okay. And you have defined this particular FH as a frequency at which the gain is found to be 1 over root 2 times the maximum gain. So that is 0 0.707 times the AV max. The frequency is termed as FH, which is normally called as upper cutoff frequency or the frequency at which the gain is 1 over root 2 times the maximum gain. In terms of decibels, this frequency is also called as 3 dB frequency. Okay. FH is also called as a 3 dB frequency. Right. Okay. Uh, so that the bandwidth of the RC low pass filter circuit is given as FH. That is FH minus 0. That is FH. In this uh, bandwidth, we have defined the criterion as the range of frequencies over which the gain is 1 over root 2 times the maximum gain. That means we have considered the worst case. Worst case means we are, a, we are uh, as a developer, we are uh, uh, promising the customer that our circuit can provide at least 70% of the maximum gain guaranteed over the given range of frequencies. Okay. So even if uh, the circuit is providing more gain than the uh, promised value, then also it is happy for the customer. Okay. So uh, that is why we need to always look for the worst case definition for the uh, bandwidth. So here we have considered the bandwidth as something like the range of frequencies over which the gain is 1 over root 2 times the maximum gain. Right. Okay. Even in the frequency response at f is equal to fh, the angle is found to be 45 degrees and with increase in uh, frequency, the angle is going to reach towards the 90 degrees at f is equal to infinity. That is why this curve is not reaching or touching this 90 degrees line because only at f is equal to infinity, this line is going to touch the 90 degrees line. Okay, right. So this is what we have already discussed in the last class. Fine. Okay. In the last class, we ended with an output voltage equation. So the output voltage equation is given by V naught of T is equal to Vf minus Vf minus Vi into E power minus of T minus Ti by tau. This is the equation we are going to use for finding the output across either the capacitor in an RC low pass filter circuit or across the resistor R in an RC high pass filter circuit. So memorizing this equation is very very essential for finding the output of either of the circuits that we are going to learn in this particular unit. Okay, the inputs can be anything that is already predetermined, prefixed. Okay, in the unit from the syllabus point of view. Uh, but uh, the volt, uh, equation that we will be using is the same equation for either of the circuits. But you need to be very much aware of what is this Vf is, what is this Vi is, what is this Ti is, what is this tau is. Okay. So what is Vf is? Vf is the output voltage at T is equal to infinity. Okay. Vf is the output voltage. When you observe your output voltage at T is equal to infinity, that you are denoting with Vf. Okay. Vi is also an output voltage, but uh, at what time you are observing the output voltage at T is equal to Ti. Okay. So when you observe the output at T is equal to Ti, then you are uh, denoting that output voltage as Vi. And what is Ti? Ti is the time at which the input is applied. So when you are applying the input at the same instant when you look at your output, that output is denoted by Vi. Okay. So the time at which you have applied the input at the same time when you look at your output, that output is denoted by Vi. Vi here is output voltage, but not the input voltage, right? Tau is the time constant that is uh, given by the product of R and C that is available in the circuit. Okay, right. Let us consider the RC low pass filter circuit. This time the input is VI of T, which is the step input. Mathematically, it is denoted by VI of T is equal to V for T greater than or equal to 0 and is 0 for T less than 0. Okay. So understand the input carefully. As long as T is less than 0, the input is 0. And suddenly at T is equal to 0, the input has changed from 0 volts to capital V volts. Okay. And from there onwards, the input is going to remain constant at capital V volts. That means 
there is a sudden change in the input you could observe exactly at t is equal to 0 and thereafter it remains constant as capital V holds. So when there are sudden changes in the input, okay, how does the circuit is uh, responding to the sudden changes in the input is what is our interest now. Okay. So how does the voltage across the capacitor is likely to vary with respect to the sudden changes in the input is what is that we are going to find now. Okay. So for finding the output voltage across the capacitor or for finding the output of this circuit when the input applied is a step input what is all that we need to do is we need to use the equation V0 of t is equal to Vf minus Vf minus Vi into E power minus of t minus Ti by tau. Okay. For t less than 0 output is 0 only because for t less than 0 input is 0 so naturally output is expected to be 0 right. So for t less than 0 output is 0. Now we are interested in over the interval 0 to infinity what is my output is okay over the interval 0 to infinity what is my output is. For finding my output over the interval 0 to infinity what is all that I need to do I need to find out what is Vf what is Ti, what is Vi and what is tau. Tau is anyway given by the product of the R and C. Okay. When I look at my Vf, Ti and Vi, I could find that my Vf has capital V. Why my Vf has capital V? What is actually Vf is? Vf is nothing but my output voltage when I was observing at T is equal to infinity. Okay. And where you are observing the output, you are observing the output across the capacitor. Okay. You have applied the input voltage that is V and you are observing across the capacitor at T is equal to infinity. You know very well that capacitor requires only 5 tau seconds for completely charging or for completely discharging. So when you have applied a voltage capital V volts, capacitor requires 5 tau seconds for reaching to this maximum value capital V. And at what time you are looking across the capacitor at T is equal to infinity. That means you have given enough time for your capacitor to charge completely. So the expected voltage across the capacitor is capital V. Right? Got my point? Okay. So Ti is equal to 0. What is Ti? Time at which input is applied. Until T less than 0, input is 0 only. At what time it has started applying the input at T is equal to 0. So that is why Ti is equal to 0. What is Vi is? Vi is nothing but the output at T is equal to Ti. So that means at uh, T is equal to 0 seconds, what is my output is? Though your input has suddenly changed from 0 volts to capital V volts at T is equal to 0, but can your capacitor can change suddenly its uh, voltage? No, your capacitor cannot change its voltage instantaneously. Right? Your capacitor requires a minimum of 5 tau seconds for uh, reaching to the maximum value. So when you look at uh, a voltage across the capacitor at zero time, when uh, your input has changed suddenly, you could observe your voltage across the capacitor as zero only because your capacitor cannot change instantaneously its voltage. It requires some time. So that you have not given. The moment the input has changed, at the same time you are looking at the output, then your VI is going to be zero. And tau is being given by product of R and C. So substituting these values in the equation, we will be getting that V0 of t is equal to replace Vf with capital V minus Vf with capital V minus Vi is 0 into a power minus of t minus Ti is 0 divided by tau. Okay. So this is been given as V0 of t is equal to capital V into 1 minus e power minus t by tau. This is the standard charging equation. Okay, or most popularly it is called exponentially rising function. Okay, so this is function of the uh, time variable t. Okay, so this is this output voltage is a function of time variable t. So for different values of t, you can get different values of output voltage. Right, got my point. Okay, so now let us try to plot the output function. Uh, which we have obtained in terms of an equation like V into 1 minus e power minus of T by tau. Okay. So this is the actual input. When I plot for different values of T, the obtained values of the output, I will be getting this red curve. Okay. This red colored curve is what is denoting the output voltage. 
okay exponentially rising function right exponentially rising function okay so what is the final value of the output voltage the final value of the output voltage is the value of the output at t is equal to infinity when you substitute t is equal to infinity e power minus infinity is zero one minus zero is one one into capital v is capital v so your output voltage is going to be capital v at t is equal to infinity that means the final value of your output is capital v okay the final value of our output is capital v so here i would like to define two time instants one is t1 another is t2 okay so one is t1 another is t2 t1 is the time at which the output is 10 percent of the maximum value what is the maximum value capital v 10 percent of uh, maximum value is 0.1 times capital v so t1 is the time taken for your output to reach to the 10 percent of the maximum value okay so similarly i can define another time t2 such that at time t2 my output is going to be 90 percent of the maximum value okay maximum value is capital v 90 percent is 0 0.9 0 0.9 times capital v is at time t is equal to t2 the output is going to reach to 90 percent of its maximum value so having defined t1 and t2 now i can define what is rise time okay rise time is now given as t2 minus t1 okay so what is rise time is given as t2 minus t1 so what is that rise time means time taken by your output to reach to 90 percent of the maximum value from the 10 percent of the maximum value is what is defined as rise time okay time taken by the output value to reach to 90 percent of its maximum value from the 10 percent of its maximum value okay right now let us derive an expression for the rise time okay so if you want to derive an expression for the rise time you need to find out what is t2 and what is t1 okay if you know what is t2 and what is t1 then t2 minus t1 is nothing but your rise time okay and i have an equation like for t greater than or equal to 0 or over the interval 0 to infinity my output voltage is given as v into 1 minus e power minus of t by tau okay at t is equal to t1 my output is being defined as 0.1 times capital v so uh, when i substitute my output with 0.1 times capital v at time t is equal to t1 okay i can get what is my t1 is okay so here i replaced my t with t1 so that my output is at t is equal to t1 it is 0.1 v so that i can get an equation for my t1 so t1 is found to be 0.1 times tau okay similarly at t is equal to t2 v naught of t is given as 0.9 times capital v so when i substitute in my equation output voltage is equal to 0.9 times v which is the value at the t is equal to t2 then i will be getting t2 is equal to 2.3 times tau okay now it is easy for me to derive what is rise time rise time is nothing but t2 minus t1 so where t2 is 2.3 tau minus 0.1 tau so that rise time is given as 2.2 tau okay so rise time is given as 2.2 tau fine okay now let us see the relationship between rise time tr and bandwidth fh as i mentioned earlier the bandwidth is fh which is given by 1 over 2 pi times rc okay so let us see what is the relationship between rise time and the bandwidth we know that rise time is given as 2.2 times tau okay 2.2 times tau so if i can write my tau which is nothing but rc in terms of fh then i'll get the relationship between rise time and the bandwidth okay so let us see what is the bandwidth actually bandwidth actually is 1 by 2 pi rc where rc i was representing with tau now i can have a relationship between tau and the fh so that i can substitute here so that i'll be having a relationship between rise time and the bandwidth right okay so tau is equal to 1 by 2 pi fh so that uh, i can substitute now in place of tau what is this tau in terms of fh okay so i have tr is equal to 2.2 times tau and i'll replace tau with this particular thing then i'll be getting my rise time as so and so in terms of fh okay so when this is further simplified I will be getting rise time is equal to 0.35 by fh. Okay. So from here, I can understand that the product of rise time and the bandwidth is always a constant. Okay. 
the product of rise time and the bandwidth is always a constant that means what when rise time is increasing bandwidth automatically decreases so as to make the product of those two as constant unlike that if bandwidth is increasing rise time decreases in order to make their product as constant okay so when one is increasing other has to decrease in order to make their product constant fine okay so that means rise time and bandwidth both are inversely related there is a trade off existing among these two parameters that is what we need to understand fine okay so this is the relationship between rise time and the bandwidth so finally we will summarize what we have learned in today's class what we have learned is we have derived an expression for the output voltage when the step input signal is passed through an rc low pass filter circuit and how does it looks like capital v into 1 minus e power minus of t by tau so this is the standard charging equation it is also called as exponentially rising function we have defined rise time and we have got the expression for rise time as 2.2 times tau and from this rise time we got the relationship between rise time and the bandwidth okay so for that we have uh, uh, expressed bandwidth is equal to fh in terms of 2 pi rc and uh, rc is being written in terms of tau okay from where we can get the relationship between rise time and the bandwidth as rise time is equal to 0.35 by bandwidth or fh okay so this is what we have learned today i hope you have understood uh, what we have discussed in today's class so thank you very much for watching see you next time thank you